Barkley is always trying to improve her game when she has the time and has been working closely with coach Sean Clement of late. Wow! Today, they're looking at taking her newfound short game skills and applying them to her full swing. So we're down here getting into the heart of what we're going to be working on with Sean Clement and we've done some amazing short game stuff so far, but what are we doing today? So we're going to graduate. Notice the pitch shots that you hit in the last session, right? Yep. You finished with those beautiful, crisp shots. Now, since you're in England, mm -hmm. there's a lot of wind out there in there the UK. Is. Especially in January. Yeah, and we're in Florida. I mean, this week has been a very windy week. So if you're in Texas or Florida or out, out in the UK, you've got to learn how to deal with the wind. Yeah. Now, we have a seven iron in our hands. Mm -hmm. So you remember that pitch shot we did with a pitching wedge? you can easily do that with the seven iron as well. Okay. So let's say, uh, well, how far would you normally hit the seven iron? Um, I'd normally hit the seven iron about 120. Okay, so let's say you had a 90 yard shot mm -hmm. into a four, four club wind. Yeah. That would be a pitch shot with a seven iron. If you were to try to hit a shot with a full swing and you put full velocity on it into the wind, you would create way too much spin, the ball would balloon and come back at you. Yes. So if you swing smoothly through the dandelion stem, mm -hmm. then you'll impart a lot less spin on the ball. You'll get a knuckle ball coming through the wind. It'll land very softly because you're against the wind. Yeah, so, I see. And that's what we're going to do. Ah, so okay. we always need, so let's go first and foremost here. We're going to get into the, the meat of alignment. So we are binocular machines. Our eyes are in the front of our face. Yeah. So you'll realize, that you ever, has anybody ever told you your alignment was off sometimes? Oh, all the time. All the time. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. So that's because our side vision is, that's the only defective part that we have. Mm -hmm. We're not meant to, I mean, I can tell you there's a target over there with my side yeah, vision. But it's not easy. But I can't accurately get there. Yeah. So that's why we would set up from here. So let's say we're going to go over that black flag. We would pick a spot in front of the ball from where you're standing. Yeah. You're using your binocular vision to find the intermediate point. You don't want it to be more than a foot in front of the ball. Yeah, No that's more right. than that. Yeah. So it has to be in your immediate peripheral vision. Mm -hmm. So if I were to make a golf swing in front, I'm facing you right now and I'm making a golf swing. Where's my golf swing going? Somewhere Basically over there. 90 degrees to you, right? <laughs> yeah. So I'm now going to send a shot towards you. I'm lined up to go to move towards you. My brain needs to see you this way. Mm -hmm. I just pull the shot dead left. Yeah. So the only way that I can accurately move towards you is if I had an intermediate point. Now those lined up pretty good. Yeah, they look good. So doesn't that look like the, the shot would move towards you? That'll come at me. Yeah. This feels like I'm moving a lot more to the right, right. for somebody at okay. first. Yeah. It'll feel like they're swinging well right of where they think they're going. Yeah, I and see. And then they look up and they go, oh, that's at the target. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we have an intermediate point from here. Yeah. We've confirmed it with our binocular vision. Yep. That's going towards black flag right black there. Black flag, yeah, yeah. Go ahead and set up. Show me a practice swing that would be way too soft to go to the black flag. To go to the black flag. That'll never make it. <laughs> I'll never make it. One that's way too strong. Okay. <laughs> so that would sail well past. Yeah. Did you kind of force that a bit? Probably, yeah. So <laughs> I was overhitting. So here's well, here's the deal. When you're when you're swinging through the grass, what's the best way? So we know the best way to put a ball in the air is to cut grass. Mm -hmm. What's the best way to cut grass? Do you want to shove, place, or? just whip and glide over it. Exactly. Yeah. So let me see a whip through the grass towards black flag. Okay. Ooh. That was whippier. That was whippier, yeah. Okay. Now so show me one in between now. Um How was that? It felt okay. Felt okay? Yeah. Let's give it a go. Okay. So we're going that way. Yeah. So you want to line up parallel to that. Does that feel parallel? Uh, it does to me, but it might not be. How are your feet as with that? Do you feel that they're a little to the right? There yeah. we go. Yeah, that's better. See that? Yeah. yeah. Ball center's fine. Mm -hmm. So now you see a dandelion stem? I see one. A nice smooth cut through the dandelion stem over that spot. Okay. 
Ooh, Lovely. That was a nice shot. So contact was again yeah, spot on. I didn't even look at the ball when I hit that. It was all there. That yeah. was that's important. Yeah. So you, there was no ball. There was just a wonderful dandelion stem to cut. Mm -hmm. And because you saw something to cut through in a specific direction, the ball went off beautifully. Yeah, it's nice. Now, sometimes do you feel that you're hitting the shots a little too far to the right? Yeah, I do actually. They, I do push them out right quite okay. easily. So the angle of the cut just needs to be adjusted. Mm -hmm. Now, in Canada, we play a lot of hockey. Yes. Have you ever seen a hockey stick, how there's a big curve in it? Mm -hmm. So when you hold the hockey stick over here, you would have like a beak. It's yeah, curved. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's because when my hands come forward, I won't lose the puck. So I'm collecting the puck from over here and I'm releasing the puck out there. Yeah. So if I start with my, my club like this and a neutral grip like what you have, and my hands come through first, isn't that gonna go to the right? Definitely. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna close the face. Mm, so okay. Anna is gonna take the club and close it a good 30 degrees. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, so we let go of the club, we close the face, now regrip it. Yeah. Good. Now. Wow, that feels like it's gonna go all the way over there. Miles left, hang yeah. on a second. So in your mind right now, when you look down, you're thinking the ball's going to go way left. Definitely. Correct? Okay, now, here's your stem. You can still cut the dandelion stem with that angle. Yeah. Imagine little teeth on the leading edge of the club and you're sawing through the stem. You would simply be sawing from toe to heel right now, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so let me see a nice smooth cut through that stem. Okay. Good. Let me see a nice smooth cut through that stem towards black again. Okay. Eyes on the grass. Mm -hmm. You see a stem to cut. Yeah. Use momentum to cut the stem. Oh, no. So it feels very different in your it hands right now. It feels so different. And I All think right? it's because the club face looks so closed. I'm then right. not thinking about... So you're thinking, should... now you're thinking about how the club face is going to hit the ball. This yeah. is totally normal. <laughs> okay, so we'll good. just give you a couple more reps, okay? Yeah. Go ahead. You'll see what happens. So all we're doing is we're cutting the stem with the sole of the club, feeling a nice whip. Okay. Okay. Now, there's another way we can do that. I have a second option. <laughs> right. Now, a lot of people will look down at that and they say, I can't handle the face looking so closed. Yeah. So this is where you'll, you're going to see a secret most people don't realize happens on Ooh, tour. Okay. So a little secret here. So go ahead and do that setup again with the face closed. With the face closed. Yeah. Say about that. So if you were to square it up, now it, it looks better. Now it looks better, yeah. Notice you feel a little more tension in the forearm? Yeah. So you'll notice right now when you hold your hands out, you'll see more knuckles here. Mm -hmm. This is what we call a strong grip. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. yeah. So if you face the camera, mm -hmm. this is what's going on. So if you relax the hands and go back to your normal grip, it would look like this. Yeah. So you close the face and square it up. Right. Now we got some tension in the forearm, so mm -hmm. we got some good torque. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like the grip is just a little more firm? Definitely. Okay. Yeah. So let's see you cut the stem with that now. Okay. There we go. Bit of draw. There's a draw on it. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So. It's it kind of deregulated you yeah. when we close the face. And that's normal. You'll, all of a sudden, when the face is closed, you feel more weight in the that's lead right. hand. So you strengthen the grip yes. to bring it back. So you can do that. So you have yeah. two options. Mm -hmm. Actually, you have three. You can go leave it like that or square it up, and you'll feel tension there or a little bit of both. Yeah, OK. Okay. But you notice now we, we took that push fade yes. and we turned it into a, a penetrating draw. Mm, mm. Did you feel a little more compression on the face? Yeah, uh, but the, yeah. I mean, the whole thing feels very different to what I normally do. So, yes. You know, I could probably be here all night and, and keep practicing this because right. it, it feels like it's got big potential. Yes, exactly. So that's, that's why for our viewers, when they, when they make a change, they feel that it's a monumental change. I mean, yeah. then they go, well, how am I going to hit the ball with that? And all of a sudden, they go back to the ball. Yeah. That's what happened and to you. And then one great strike. And, and, you, and you had a couple of shanks. <laughs> yeah, a couple of shanks. No panic. And you notice how we got you back? <laughs> uh -huh. We were cutting the stem with the toe of the club. And that just puts your focus more on cutting through yeah. and predicting you're going to hit the toe of the club if you did. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, whoosh, you got this yeah. beautiful shot. Good so let's stuff. confirm that.
Let's confirm that. So we have a stem to cut. Got a, so I'm going to close it. Close so face, gonna... square it up. Square Feel it that up. nice tension. Yeah. So yep. now back up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Do a practice swing. Yeah. See where that club wants to pass. Okay. Good. Set the club down on that line. Yeah. Okay. And then feel like now when you cut through the stem, you're cutting through with the outer half okay. of the blade. Okay? okay. So a nice little whipping cut through the stem. Yeah. Ooh, that <laughs> was lovely. <laughs> so what? Tight one yard draw. Did yeah. you hear the compression? It felt delightful. So if you strike balls like that on the range, you think you'd have a lot more fun? Yes, definitely. So, so stay tuned for our next episode <laughs> where I'm going to give you one of my favorite ways to prepare for a round of golf and show you how much fun you can have on the range because there should never be any difference between what you do here on the range as what you do on the golf course. They yeah. say the longest walk in golf is from the practice tee to the first tee. Yes. It really doesn't have to be that way. Okay. So I'm looking forward to showing you that. Yeah, making range time more fun is something I can't wait to find out how to do because I don't enjoy yeah, it at all. My daughter <laughs> hates it too. <laughs> Good stuff, Sean. Thank you very much. All Thank right. You. See you later.